ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, 19-year MLB fan, six-time All-Star, Cy Young winner, what? World Series champion, has over 3,000 career strikeouts, played for the Guardians. What? It wasn't their name. That's on me. At That's the on time. Me. Brewers right, and Yankees right. in high school, stud football player. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, athlete of athlete, friend of the program, CC Sabathia. Yeah. Yeah. CC. What's up, fellas? I had to get away from the juju news there for you. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, no, well, no, no, no. I, I was I was into it. Like I, I, I mean, I was locked in on the juju yeah. news. Well, I didn't want to break. You know, you're a legend, obviously, and there was no reason for us to do that. <laughs> so we had a full discussion about a news break. We apologize for making you hold. Let's chit chat about it quickly here. This elbow thing, okay? CC, you played football, obviously. I think you're a multi-sport athlete. Jet Passon just came on and gave an impassioned speech about how the youth leagues are kind of ruining kids early. He wrote an entire book on this entire thing. I know you do work with the MLB, and obviously you're an MLB legend and pitcher stud. Like, is this a conversation that's taking place about the youth leagues? And is Jet Passon right about that with these elbow injuries we're kind of seeing right now happen around the MLB to stud pitchers? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the way that these guys come into the league, I mean, they're all coming in with a surgery or two already, you know. Um, and it's because of, you know, they're, they're playing baseball year-round where, you know, you just mentioned, you know, some of us in this, this older generation, you know, when it was football season, I was playing football. When it was basketball season, I was playing basketball. And, you know, I, I also played another position besides pitching. Like, I was a hitter. I played first base. I played outfield. So it wasn't just pitching – from the time I was nine years old until the time I got to the big league. So I think, you you know, with this rash of injuries that you're seeing, it has a lot to do with these guys being pitchers only from the time that they're, you know, pre-teens until the, you know, till they get to the big leagues. You only got so many throws in your arm before you're going to have to have surgery. It's an unnatural, mo it's an unnatural motion. And the more you do it, the more times you keep doing it over and over, especially at a younger age, you know, it's more likely for you to have surgery. So it's like a 100% surgery rate if you're a pitcher that ends up making it to the big leagues? I mean, yeah, at some point. You know, um, you know. luckily enough for me, I, I avoided all, you know, major elbow injuries and all of that stuff. And um, wow. But my very last pitch I threw in the big leagues, I tore everything on my shoulder. My capsule, rotator cuff, labrum, bicep, everything. So, like I said, I mean, it's, it's, it's only so many throws you have in your arm before something's going to – tear up it's inevitable they're putting 100 pitches on eight-year-olds allegedly you know that's a that's a hit that's a yeah there's a counter going inevitably from the beginning of it all go ahead aj cc i saw what kenley jensen said that the the, the balls like this either slippery baseballs and it's hard to control right now and he's having a tough time controlling them. what's going on with the baseballs and how important is that and do you guys are you able to see like a box of balls and rough them up like quarterbacks are able to uh nfl game balls great question yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing, you know, so the, the baseballs that we use in the game are mudded up and rubbed up by usually somebody at the stadium. Um, before, I think, 23, I think it was just up to the teams to, to mud the baseballs up. So however you want to do it, I think at, in the last year, MLB has got involved and kind of uniformed the way they want the baseballs to look and, you know, kind of a certain way and mudding up the balls. But yeah, I mean, um, every baseball is different. You know, I, you know, we were talking about this today. We had a meeting with the Pirates, and, you know, there's literally, you know, people in the factory in Costa Rica stitching these baseball together. So, you know, every everyone's going to be different every time you grab a baseball. So that's always been something. It's, it's just the fact of being able to get a good grip, whether it's rosin or, you know, stuff that you, you, you're allowed legally to use now to grab a good grip. But every baseball that you pick up, you know, as a big leaguer is, is different. So we got hand-sewn baseballs, but we're about to have robotic umpires. Angel Hernandez, tell me about him. Tell me about him. I've had some tough times with Angel Hernandez. <laughs> um, if, if, it, if it was up to me, um, I would want full ABS, fully, you know, robotic umpires. But just talking oh. to the guys and the players of today's game, they don't want that. They kind of want the human element. They want to be able – I feel like they're leaning towards to be able to, you know, be able to challenge that pitch right there or challenge that call – where you can tap your helmet, go upstairs, look upstairs, and they can review it. Um, it's a quick thing that they use in the minor leagues, and I feel like we'll go to that before we go to fully, you know, automated, you know, robotic umpires. Now, obviously, we've seen this pitcher right here. He started taking advantage of the strike zone. That's the human element that the pitchers are talking about, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And and as a pitcher, you know, if, you, if he's calling that out there, you just keep throwing it out there, you know, and see how far he's going to go. Um, and, you know, that that's obviously – um, always been a big problem, you know. For me, um, I've always I've always had problems 
with umpires and obviously with angels. So, um, yeah, I would just like to take that out of it. But if you talk to the guys today, they don't want that. They they want, you know, catchers back there framing pitches and, you know, being able to still strike. There will always be a gripe whenever it's a judgment call in a competitive world. You know, like, think about all the fights we see for UFC or boxing where the judges get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like anytime yeah. there is judgment taken, like, let alone every single pitch, it's a human's judgment. That's absurd. From the angle they're and, standing, too, it's a weird one. You know, it's a weird and that's every, And that's what every, I mean, they got a new rule with the obstruction rule at second base, and it's kind of left up to umpire's discretion. So, you know, it's, it's kind of whatever they see, you know. So when you leave it up there, there's, like you said, there's always going to be a gripe. Ty's got a question for you. Yeah, CC. obviously the season is a grind, but as like a Yankees fan and they've had, you know, one of their best starts uh, ever, and then teams like the Pirates and like the Tigers and Royals and some of these teams who weren't necessarily going to be competitors, people thought like how much do these early season April and like May games matter? Like as a team, can you know like, hey, obviously we're not going to make the playoffs based on the early season games like this, but we can also play ourselves into like, you know, outperforming what you thought was going to happen. Like how much stock would teams be taking into like a hot start or winning, you know, 15 of your first 20 games when you know there's still five or six months left of the season? The Pirates. No, I think you always kind of put, mm-hmm. th- take stock into a, a hot start, especially like those teams that you just named, like the Pirates or, you know, Kansas City or even the Yankees because, you know, you, you can't win the division or you can't win the World Series in the first month, but you could definitely lose it. If you get off to a, a, a bad start and, you know, go 5-20 and 20 or something like that for the first month. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, coming out of spring training, everybody just wants to get settled in. And then once you see guys start getting into a groove and you get off to a hot start, you start believing. And, and you know, anything can happen during the summertime. And, and once you get momentum rolling, baseball is one of those things where you plan it every day and it's all about confidence. So, you start winning some of those games early and you start feeling like you're supposed to win some of these series, um, yeah, it can turn into a great summer. Okay, so the Pittsburgh Pirates are winning, what is it, the pennant? A pennant? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The pennant? The pennant. Mm-hmm. A super pennant? Dude, we're about the to pennant. win it. We're about to win. The, yeah, we're about to win the fucking pennant, CC. Mm-hmm. That's what we're about to do. <laughs> you know why? Because we got the hundo boys. But with everything that Jeff Passon's talking about, are they going to survive? The Pirates in good spot. This Paul Skeens guy, have you got eyes on him in Indianapolis and how he's been doing? Is that going to carry over into the majors, you think? That guy is ridiculous. Yes! I mean, what, what he's throwing is definitely going to carry over to the big leagues. I mean, I thought I thought last year, after right out of LSU after the, after the College World Series, bring him to the big leagues. Yes! Like, let's go. Has that, I mean, that ever happened? Has that ever happened? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I, I, the guy, the, the kid that's the first baseman for the um, for Anaheim last year, he was in college last year and made it to the big leagues last year. Wyatt Langford was in college last year, made it to the big leagues start of the, of the start of this year. So, I mean, Skeens, I, I don't know if it's going to get any better than it is right now. He throws 102 with a wipeout slider, good changeup. So, let's get him to the big leagues, man. Start 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 striking out some big league hitters. So he's an ace, right? That's what everybody would consider him, like. Absolutely. So guys that can throw 100 but can't do it for long periods of time get moved to close. Like, how do you find out if you're a closer or if you're an ace in this entire thing? Because wouldn't 102, I guess with the Pirates, how many we close it is the thing. Yeah, yeah. How do you figure that out? How how do you know if you're a closer or an ace? Well, I I think, you know, back in my day, everybody came up as a starter. And you just they just weeded themselves out. The guys that couldn't, you know, sustain sustain their their velocity or – Guys that couldn't get, you know, through the third time through the lineup, we ended up moving to the bullpen. You think about a guy like Mariano Rivera; he started off as a starter, um, and then ends up in the bullpen. So um, it's just one of those things where, you know, they they back then they get you into the system and see if you can handle being a starter. Um, now, you know, they're drafting relievers. You see guys in college that are that reliever that are relievers only. So um, now it's more down to a science where, you know, these guys come into they come into the league defined already as one thing and you know Skeens is one of those guys that you know has, has been identified as a starter and um a really good one I think can for a long time I think he can be he's a hoss yeah, yeah huge he's an absolute yeah. hoss and a winner you know we know that he's mm-hmm. a winner Connor's got a question for you yeah CC obviously today Jackie Robinson day did you ever pitch on Jackie Robinson day and is it kind of even one of those more heightened days where you know you see your jersey and you, you got your normal number but 42 is there and it just kind of gives you that extra juice on that day 
Yeah, Jackie Day was always a good day. And I was even in the league back when, you know, everybody wasn't, um, you know, mandated to wear the number. So you had to, you know, put a put a, a request into the league and they would let you wear 42. And it was always a special day. I always had my best games on, on Jackie Day. And um, I just remember 2007, the year I won the Cy Young, um, I always got off the bad starts. I always pitched bad in April. Um, and I got a chance to pitch on Jackie Day against the White Sox. I went eight innings and gave up no runs, and it kind of, like, got me off to, you know, uh, winning the Cy Young that year. So that was – it's always been a special day, and um, I still have the jerseys from, you know, every time I wore 42. I like that you normally don't wake up till about, you know, May, June. <laughs> Mid-May. Yeah. Mid like, Mother's Day. Mother's Day is when I usually wake up. We're on Jackie <laughs> Robinson. Yeah. I got to go put on <laughs> yeah. real quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, eight innings of being an absolute beast. That's beautiful, CeCe. I'm happy to hear the MLB, you know, celebrate this stuff. You said you had to petition it at one point. Is this from that day? This must be from that day. Wow. What, look at this show. Out of ABC, no. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, you reaching CeCe's yeah, teaching, bitch. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about that. What's that name on the jersey there that you're wearing? What's oh, that? that's, that's the, I didn't play for the Guardians. I played for the Indians. Whoa. Jesus. And, oh, and, and, and I'm about a good 330 right there, too. I'm offensive lineman right there, offensive tackle. Hey, I've never seen a thin person be able to hit something far or throw something that fast. Yep. Got to have a little ass if you want something to go fast. That's right. I've always mass equals it. gas, baby. There it is. <laughs> mass <laughs> equals gas. Speaking of mass, D-Butt's got a question yeah, for you. Speaking of that big frame, you said you mentioned it earlier, being a three-sport uh, star in high school. What made you pick baseball and go that route, um, going straight to the minors, obviously? And then uh, another sport you picked up post or at least I've seen post-baseball, golf. How's the golf game right now as well? The golf game is good, man. I just left Augusta. So um, I started off last summer at a 17 handicap. I'm down to a 10. So I love oh, yeah. golf, man. I'm, I wish I was playing when I was yeah. pitching. Um, but that's that's my new sport. I mean, I I play it every day. I'm actually playing in the morning. So if there's a, a nice day out here, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always on the golf course with a tee time. Um, as far as, like, baseball. You, whoa, whoa, baseball whoa, whoa, whoa. you went from a 17 to a 10 in 12 months? 17 to a 10. Putting? Driver got better. What got what improved? Driver driver got a lot better. The driver got a lot. I'm still terrible putting. Still terrible. <laughs> oh, putting. so we got a lot of we we know where we can grow. So you used to hit a massive yeah. slice because you were swinging so baseball-y? Yeah, and now now I'm able to you know I can I can play. It's it's not a slice anymore. It's just, it's a little fade now. Oh, so yeah. I'm able to hit some fairways now. A little buttery fade out mm. there. Uh, anyways, <laughs> of course you go from a 17 to a 10. Guy's gonna be scratched by June. Yeah, yeah. sir. <laughs> this is bananas. Obviously that's why you're CC Sabathia and I am not. Now with that being said, a lot of options. A yeah, lot of options, yeah. we would assume, with somebody that can put their golf game from 17 to a 10 mm -hmm. in 12 months. <laughs> Think about how athletic you oh have to be. Oh, my God. What a joke. <laughs> hey, look how fucking big he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to make you telephone pulse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, anyway, sorry about that. Go ahead. Sorry, here, I cut you off. No, no, no. I was just saying that uh, I played all three sports in high school, and I had scholarships to play football and basketball. Um, but the situation that I was in, um, I needed, you know, me and my mom was me and my mom, and we needed, you know, money. And I got drafted in the first round. That's literally decision. Like they made the decision for me. Mm -hmm. I got drafted in the first round, and I knew I could probably get, you know, you know, a million, maybe a million and a half dollars. And and I still, Chris Winky was in college at the time, so I was like, I can go to play baseball. If this don't work out in the minor leagues, I can always go back to college and play football. So um, football was always going to be my backup plan. But yeah, I mean, baseball kind of chose me. And when I got drafted, I didn't even know if I was playing first base or if I was pitching. I got drafted by the Indians in 1998, and I'm on the phone with the guys, and I'm like, am I hitting or am I pitching? Like, I, it was just really like a trial. It was one of those things, and I get to the minor leagues, and I didn't know how to throw a four-seamer or a two-seamer, any of that stuff. They showed me my delivery. They showed me how to throw a four-seamer, and I go from throwing 92 in high school to 98 in, like, three months, two months. What? And the rest is kind of history. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I got drafted in the first round to be a pitcher in the majors. I had no idea what a force tastes of force. What a <laughs> No idea what a force was. Give me the, was. Give me the baseball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm throwing it. I'm beating that guy, right? Yeah, got it. How about when you told us um, that you weren't handing the ball over uh, to anybody but Mariano Rivera? Okay, whoever yeah. you got in there, they better be better than me before you mm -hmm. want to get this fucking ball out of my hand tonight. <laughs> That's like that competitive... Man, we're lucky to have you in the sports world, CC. Yeah. Legitimately. And CC will be a part of the MLB Network's clubhouse game tonight between the Astros and the Braves. Are they good? These teams stink or are they good? 
No, great teams. Plus, CC's got special events lined up for MLB's first ever game at Rickwood Field in Birmingham on June 20th between the Giants and Cardinals in honoring the – am I allowed to say this? I think so. If you're I'm talking- asking two people. CC, Darius J. Butler. I don't know what the word is. You know what the word is. Starts with an I. No. Oh. Negro Leagues? Oh, yeah, yeah. you can say oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'll say it for you. What's the other one? What's He's the honor, honor in the honor. Negro Leagues. There we go. The honor, Negro League. The, the old guy. I don't know. I want to let you know. <laughs> I don't know. Because I've gone to some places and they've had like sweet hats mm-hmm. and like merch. I'm like, would like to buy that. And then I'm like, I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm kind of. Every single time I do, like, yeah, 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 yeah. all right, I'm gonna go with the plain P for Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Anyways, you got a lot of shit popping off over there at MLB Network, and we're incredibly pumped for you. Uh, you're on there all the, like all the time, or special events, games. What do we what do we have going on with them? Yeah, we we do these events called the Clubhouse Game, where we we it's, we kind of sit around and talk about the game while the game is going on. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge sports fan, and I watch a lot of sports, and I kind of got this idea. Um, like four years ago, I was watching the Super Bowl with Tiki Barber and getting a chance to just sit next to a football player and have him call out the plays and, the, and you know, the, the, and in the context of the game, this is how we watch games as sports fans. Obviously, you guys, too, the same way. So it's just letting fans get a, a peek into how, you know, we take in sports or take in the game and um, we call it the Clubhouse Edition on MLB Network. Ty, you ever seen it? Yeah, I absolutely love it. It's like one of the best things the MLB Network does. Whoa! Yeah. Hell yeah. How about it? Thank you. He's a tough critic. He hates everybody, but he is a Yankee. So, yeah. yeah, (laughs) All-time legend. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, CeCe, we appreciate you, man. We'll continue to follow along, and thank you for making time out of the golf game. No problem. Of course, anytime y'all want me back, I'm on. Let me know. You got it. And shout-out to you going to Rickwood Field in Birmingham on June 20th to honor the... Negro League. Negro League. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that one. Nope. Awful announcing report. Yeah, Listen to exactly. this. What did say? Let, what? On Jackie Robinson Day. <laughs> Listen to this asshole in a tank top. Anyways, we appreciate the hell out of you, ladies and gentlemen. CC Sabathia. Hey, CC.